Yo, how are we Game Leapers? Coach Higgs back again. Hope you all got what you wanted for Christmas. Let me know what your dad, I mean Sander, got you down in the comment section. Was it an RP card? Was it some TSM slippers? Was it a tier 3 sub to Pokimane? Let us know. Alright, back to the video topic and this is a Red Hot 1. In just the next 10 minutes or so, you will learn who the 20 best champions are to get pentakills on. Now you might be thinking, why should I focus on pentakills? Well, I'll tell you why. They are fun as you know what. If someone was to ask you how many pentakills you have gotten over your Summoner's Rift career, and you can let us know how many that is is in the comments, you know exactly what that number is, because a Penda is the pinnacle of League. Whether it's a legit 1v5 or a clean up 5 kills, seeing Pentakill on your screen and hearing that chick's voice gets you jumping out of your chair. Now if you want to give yourself the best chance of getting Pentakills and climbing out of Elo Hell in Season 11, then you know what you need? A new head. Now I'm joking, what you need is GameLeap.com and our lifetime membership which has $50 off at the moment. Join thousands of members and get signed up today, links in the description and comment section. Alright, let's get into it. Now coming in at number 20, we have Akali, and this slippery green assassin can destroy enemy backlines and clean up fights as well as anyone. The reason she's not higher, though, is because she isn't as strong as the other champions in the list in this meta. So Riftmaker and Night Harvester both have been nerfed multiple times and aren't what they used to be. But Akali is one of those OP champions that no matter how bad her items are, she will always be good because of her amazing kit. Now, one tip for when you go for those pentakills on Akali is to use your shroud as soon as you get in the fight. You can use your E and R to jump on someone, and as soon as you do, the enemy champion champions will try to peel that target and take you down. Now using your shroud ASAP keeps you safe and buys you time which is so important. Okay guys, number 19 is Jin, and he is one of 9 ADCs on this list, that's right 9. Now Eclipse has been nerfed heaps but no worries, build a Gale Force the Collector and a Rapid Fire Cannon and you can clean up teams. Now you have to understand guys that Jin isn't like most ADCs right, your real power comes from your 4 shot and your abilities. Auto attacks are still important, don't get me wrong, but it's not like you're playing Vayne where everything revolves around pumping out autos. Now one important tip is that after your four shot, you have to take time to reload. Do not headbutt the enemy team as you're getting your bullets back in there. Use this time to reposition and plan your next round of shots and abilities. Coming in at number 18, guys, we have Fiora, and as the Grand Duelist, you are not just amazing at 1v1ing, but also at 1v5ing because of your ultimate Grand Challenge and the build that is the most broken in League at the moment. So your ultimate gives you four vitals to proc, movement speed, and healing. That last word, healing, is why you always have a shot at Pender Killing, and here's why. It stacks with the healing and sustain from your eye. Items. It's a Ravenous Hydra and it's Omni Vamp and Stereos Gauge and it's healing. Now if you really wanted to hunt down those Pender's Gore Drinker is an excellent mythic too, because you can save yourself from death when you're trying to 1v5 by using its active, and this might be what makes or breaks a Pender. Moving on to number 17 we have a Jinx, and despite being kind of trash at the moment, I mean which ADC isn't, Jinx is still one of the best Pender kill champions on the Rift. Now any champion with a reset or enhancement off takedowns is going to be on this list, and as Jinx your passive, get excited, is that steroid. Now when you kill that enemy tank or assassin trying to jump onto you to start a fight, you gain 175% bonus movement speed and 15% total attack speed. This allows you to chase the fleeing enemy champions and abuse your fish bones and its range to finish them off in pentakill. The 16th best champion to pentakill on guys is Riven and the reason you're higher than Fiora on this list despite being a worse champion overall in this meta is that you have an instant shield and instant stun. You don't have to wait on anything is what I'm saying. Now as far as your items, Gore Drinker, Black Cleaver, Ravenous Hydra, this is your core and gives you everything you you want. So damage, health, sustain, and even armor reduction so you can smash through those enemy resistances. Now one of the keys to Pender killing on Riven is to not waste your ultimate. Try to combo your wind slash with your stun or knock up onto multiple enemies, especially the squishies, and they will go boom. Alright guys, the top 15 begins with Yasuo and Yona, and these two half brothers have some of the best Pender killing potential going around, but it's actually kind of hard to execute. On Yasuo, it's hard to use your tornado on an enemy team that is actually looking at their screens, and as Yona, if you use your E incorrectly or get caught, it's due G. For both champions, your ultimate is the big fella. Use this correctly and 5 kills could be on the cards, and the key to it is timing. Now in Yasuo for instance, just because your teammate knocks up the enemy mid laner doesn't mean you ult instantly. Wait until that knock up is about to end and then go in. If you're on Yone, try to time your fate sealed so you hit multiple enemies and again at the end of your teammate's CC. Now coming in at number 14 guys, we have Pike, and unfortunately for all you support fans, this is the only one on the list, but it's kind of understandable because you know, how many times are you going to get a pendiculous Janna? Now there are are two reasons Pike is on this list. Can you think of them? The one is Dustblade, so the new invisibility effect works so well with Pike's kit because when you dive the enemy backline it allows you to reposition and wait for your all important cooldowns. The second and more obvious one is your ultimate death from below. I said before the resets are a massive part of Pender killing right? and Pike's ultimate is exactly this. If you decimate an enemy champion with an X, you can do it again and again and again. 
Number 13 on our list guys is Kaiser, and this champion may not have a reset, but she's incredibly strong at the moment, and her kit is what makes her a great pentakill champion. Pike has a reset, Jinx has a steroid, well as Kaiser, you have an assassin-like playstyle that allows you to pick off weak enemy champions and out-mobilize the enemy team. Your supercharged invisibility, your AoE Q, your long-range W, and your ultimate killer instinct, I mean the name alone is enough to get pentakills. Let's continue game leapers and at 12 and I count down is Misfortune. Now MF is similar to Jin, right? And Jin was number 19, so what's the difference? Well, Misfortune's damage in her ultimate is just quicker. That's it. So let's say your Malphite lands an ultimate onto five champions. Jin's ultimate can't capitalize on that situation nearly as much as a bullet time, right? You may still 100 to 0 someone, but Misfortune can do so instantly and to multiple champions, not just one. Build a Mana Mune, Eclipse, and the Collector guys, and you will pentakill. Now, coming in at number 11, we have Aurelia, and she is the second best bruiser to pentakill on. Let me know in the comments if you already know what the number one bruiser is, by the way. But hey, Aurelia is a monster still, and there are two reasons for this your passive and your ultimate. Now, it's essential you understand how your passive works, because if you were to pull off a 1v5, you deal more damage and gain attack speed. Your goal is to get to 5 stacks of Ionian Fervor, and you can do this by using and landing your abilities. Now one of the easiest ways is to use your Q to execute minions and then bang, in you go you're on 5 stacks. Another way is to use your ultimate to start your engage, so if you hit 5 champions you stack your passive straight away. If you hit 4 champions you can quickly W to get to 5 and away you go. The top 10 guys who is keen? Now starting it off we have Twitch and the rat is famous for coming out of stealth and getting pentacles. Like Jinx as Twitch he might be one of the worst champions in this meta, but if you can get to that crack and slay Runon's Hurricane and Infinity Edge Spike, 5 kills in a second or two is certainly doable. Now the key is deciding where and when to exit your stealth. So generally, when a fight starts, you want to be surveying the fight and planning the perfect spot from which to unleash. And most of the time, this will be behind your teammates so you can use them as protection. Sometimes though, when the enemy team has used their major cooldowns and there's no real threat to you, you can catch them off guard with a dirty flank and rip them a new one. Moving on to number 9 guys, and we have Karzix, the best Dustblade abuser in League. Now I said that Dustblade's invisibility was great for Pike, well it's even better for Kar because it procs your passive and along with your ultimate, you are invisible for days. Now I touched on flanking if you're playing Twitch, well it's way more paramount for Karzix. You never want to be playing the fight in a straight line. This is essentially just headbutting. You need to be smart and think like an assassin. Use little fogs of war and flanks to access the enemy backline and clean up the rest of their squad once you're in deep. Firing her way into number 8 is Tristana, and not only is Tristana great at the moment, she is also one of the deadliest pentakillers in the game. Now it's all down to your rocket jump. If you can get a kill on an enemy champion, this cooldown is reset and this is huge. Having a 20 second cooldown reset so you can use it again is a massive advantage when going for pentakills, obviously. Now we've got another ADC at the number 7 spot guys and it's Draven. And yes, you have some of the highest DPS in the game, but two other reasons you can pentakill on Draven almost as well as anyone on the rift is your blood rush and whirling death. Now you see your W resets when you can catch your axes. So during a fight you can be permanently blood rushed meaning you have all that movement speed and attack speed for the duration. Also your whirling death does an incredible amount of damage and scales off your AD so the later the game goes you can sometimes one shot squishies with just an auto attack and an R. In at number 6 guys and we're sticking with the marksman it's Vayne. I could be the best hyper carry in league and because of this your pentakill potential is off the charts. If you stay alive that is and this is the important thing right. When you have Kraken, Ginsu's and Bork you have all the attack speed and damage you ever need but the key to dishing out this DM and not dying in the process is to use your tumble for multiple reasons, not just to enhance your silver bolt's damage. Use it to dodge CC as well or to reposition so you can condemn an enemy into some terrain. Rarely do you want to be just queuing forward because it's predictable and the fight can turn quickly if you get caught. Guys, we're now into the top 5, let's smash it. Now number 5 we have Darius and this dunking bruiser is the best top laner to slice all 5 enemies in half. Now when you have 3 points in your Noxian guillotine at level 16, when you kill an enemy with it, its cooldown resets completely and it costs no mana either. This is obviously amazing for pentakilling because what's also great is that your hemorrhage stacks carry over to the next champion if you executed the last with your ultimate. So what you can do is just ult that new target even if you didn't damage them beforehand. Guys, number 4 on the list is Samira and she's a baddie and the best ADC to land a pentakill on. Why? Because you have a reset too, you guessed it. Kill an enemy champion and your wild rush cooldown resets and you can keep dashing to enemy champions even with your ultimate active so you do a ridiculous amount of AoE damage as well. Most ADCs are single target damage dealers and this is what separates Samira from the rest. 
you can kill multiple enemies at a time, meaning your pentakills are quicker and, let's be honest, more flashy. Now, guys, before we move on to the top three, a friendly reminder to make use of the huge $50 sale on our Lifetown memberships at GameLeap.com. Unlimited access to challenger courses, guides, and videos made for you to improve and climb. Join thousands of others and click on one of the links below at the end of the video. So the bronze medal goes over to Cat Arena, and I'm sure you guys expected to see Cat at some point. Well, this is it. When you play Cat, the reason you're one of the three best Panda killers in the game is because you're passive. Veracity. Your cooldowns are reduced by 15 seconds when you kill an enemy champion, meaning your QW and E come off cooldown because none of them are longer than 15 seconds. This is important. Now, this should sound really, well, I don't want to say buster, so let's go with a pro guy's favorite, Massive. If you can get through two enemy champions during a fight, even your ultimate can come back off cooldown, so you can use death loaders multiple times during a fight. Also, Massive. Now the silver medal guys, here we go. This belongs to Cassidy. Now does Cassidy have a cooldown reset or any form of steroid? No. So how can he pentakill better than 99% of others? The Rift Walk, that's it. The most unplayable against ability in League after level 16, that's what it is. Once you have your Sarah stacked and hopefully a blue buff if your jungler's nice enough, late game Cassidy is close to being the most deadliest of all the champions. The instant blink on his R and the ridiculous scaling and all his abilities push him as close as anyone to the top. Alright guys, to reveal the number one pentakill champions in League of Legends, I'm going to give out some clues and let's see if my clues are good enough for you to guess the champion. Okay, so basic attacks reduce my Q cooldown by one second second, meaning I can use this a lot in fights. I actually have two more resets, and one of them is the passive in my ultimate, which reduces the current cooldown of my basic ability by 70% when I kill an enemy. And the last reset is when I kill an enemy champion with my ultimate active, it lasts for another 7 seconds, meaning I can have all of its bonuses for a good 30 seconds at least. If you haven't guessed it already guys, and this Wuju placement has no doubt brought many of you headaches and heartaches, is Master Yi, our ultimate pentakill champion. Thanks so much for watching, remember to drop a like down below and subscribe and turn on all notifications. This has been Coach Jason, until next time, peace.